What are the four elements of a story? Four elements of a story is your character, conflict, plot, and message. Character could be you, your team, your product. Now, a character could also be a country trying to get independence, a river trying to get to the sea. It depends on what story you're telling. When your TV people come here, they're going to be looking at the course as a character, Brady as a character. They're going to be looking at you as characters. Conflict. This is really important. Who wants to do what and why can't they? If you're in Hollywood pitching a script, after five minutes, if you can't tell them who wants to do what and why can't they, they're not interested. Because unless there's conflict, there's no story. Because conflict is the one thing we all experience in life. And conflict's the one thing we can engage on. So who wants to do what and why can't they? And how does your product help? That's a start. And I want that down to one person. Who wants to do what and what situation and why can't they? And why are you the answer? Plot is the story, and I'll come to that later. And message, that's a bit more complicated, but we'll come to that at the end. Message is the one sentence that you have on your, brand, your branding sentence the one sentence that you have in your branding sentence. Like, crime doesn't pay, or it's easier when you have friends, or any of those messages we take away from a movie, or a story, or whatever, or a fable. Now, <coughs> we're going to, I'm going to go through all these, but first of all, let's just ask ourselves silently a few questions. Are you solving a problem? Are you unlocking a potential that people haven't seen yet? What has changed right now to make you viable? What change or incident has happened that now is the time for you to be? Why wasn't this done before? Who will benefit in what way? Why are you the people to do it? What's the vision like? And what do you want? Now, these aren't easy questions to, to answer. Don't give me first answers. You know that great story somebody said, I'm sorry for writing you such a long letter, I just didn't have the time to write you a short one. Right? Editing, editing, editing. Draft, redraft, redraft, till you find the core truth to all those questions. That kind of sums up nearly all of what I was trying to say at the beginning. So a problem or potential? What's changed? Why now? Who's going to benefit? Why are you the people to do it? How could the world be different if you succeeded? And what do you want? Notice we're not even talking about the product there. OK, let's have a look at some basic stuff here. Character. Character of a story just starts giving, uh, character of any story gives the whole story its, its drive, its motivation. This is why so much work goes into character development hours and hours. But what we're really trying to say is, what's the character? Yes, your own character. That, that'll be revealed. But the first bit, thing of, of building a, a brand or building a story is trying to figure out, what kind of character do I immediately rec recognize in you? So let me just give you a wheel. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about is, what archetype are you? What do I immediately connect with? So for instance, are you in this end up here of the freedom end? The lover, the jester, the outlaw, or the explorer? Are you in this end, the ego end, the creator, the hero, or the magician? Are you in the order, innocent ruler, sage? Are you social, the caregiver, regular? Now, do you understand what I mean by this? So if I said something like Apple, where does Apple live on this? Creator? Magician. OK. If I said something like Dyson, Magician, explorer, but also outlaw. His story was he took on the big guys and he did his own thing. When they turned him down and again and again. So when I buy that thing, I feel that I am buying into that. I'm with James. I'm not with Bosch. I'm not with these guys. I'm with the guy who stuck his own. Hmm? I don't feel that with him. You don't feel that with him? He's very orderly and really like precise and precision. Yes. But his story, well, that he's not working. His story isn't working. But his story, his backstory is he, he invented this new machine and he was turned down again and again and again. Now he's got his own billion dollar company. 
So he, what he likes to say is, if you buy this, you are so choosing to be outlawed. Aha! Yes, he could be. He could. Well, he is very egoic. But I would say that where he wa he started off as being an explorer, and now where where where, where does where does Virgin live? Outlaw. outlaw. So if you buy this, you're actually this is you you you're buying into the feeling I'm different, the rebel feeling that we all do. So just think of your own product. What, what, what is it, and, and I can do this with all of you later, oh, oh, what is the qualities associated with your product that you want me to associate with? How will I feel? Where, where, on the, where on the scale? You know, and the reason we do this is because these are in our mind already. We can, we, we can, this is what Jung called you know, the, the subconscious archetypes. We get these. Same as princes, princesses, fairy godmothers, etc. We get them. So isolate, first of all, what kind of character you are trying to be. Then we might look a bit deeper at that character. As, I say, as a team or as a product. What's it trying to do for us? On our most fundamental level as human beings, we have what Adrian, uh, or Abraham Maslow called, you know, we have a hierarchy of needs. We have a hierarchy of needs and we try to move from one to the next, always moving up and down between a hierarchy of needs. So for instance, is your product giving me something very basic, like water, air, food, physiological needs, the things I need just to exist? Or is your product trying to give me safety or security needs? Is it trying to make me feel safer in a dangerous world? Are you helping me belong, where so many startups actually work in the social, helping me to belong to something bigger than myself? Now that I I'm fed, now that I feel secure, I've got the freedom of mind to actually start looking for something bigger, like I want to belong. Now that I belong, I actually might start thinking about myself. Is it my esteem needs? Is it about feeling better about myself? Is this where wearables? Are wearables a mixture of these two? Help me belong but feeling better about myself. Or are we into self-actualization? which is the Nike, just do it, you can win, you can be better, you can become truly who you want to be. So start thinking of where you live in that, in that hierarchy of needs. So if you're bringing water to Africa, you live here. If you're doing a, 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 a lock for a bike, or if you're doing a smoke alarm, maybe you're just here. If there's some kind of network, you're moving into here. If it's something to do with how I feel about myself, fine. And if this is me being the ultimate self, that's where I live. So now I kind of get a guess of who you are and what you want for me. What your motivation is for me. Why I feel that you're benefiting my life. Because you're moving me up this ladder in some way, or up this pyramid in some way. So that's character. Who are you and what's your motivation? Secondly, conflict. And this is absolutely crucial. Two types of conflict here. As I say, this is so we have our character. Do you think of, you know, how, do, how did all the great stories of startups, well, what are they? they were trying to, what's disruption? It's in conflict with the world. It is unhappy with the world the way it is, so it wants to change it. That's one form of conflict. I want to change the world as it is. The world is not perfect until I reach my potential. There is something wrong that I'm going to take on. So you become a champion or a warrior brand. Or at least that's the, motive, that's the energy you have in your beginning. Second one is, how am I resolving somebody else's conflict? How am I resolving somebody else's conflict? Now, back in the 50s, this was a big thing. They call, used to call it inadequacy marketing. This is when advertising started out and people saw that actually this stuff is very powerful. And a lot of advertising then was built on inadequacy. And one of the most famous ones was that is Listerine. You know Listerine the mouthwash? Yeah. That was based on a lady called Sad Edna. And Edna was sad because she couldn't get a date. And along comes Listerine, and suddenly Edna's getting laid around town like a good thing. Okay? It was based on inadequacy. Something wrong with you, and our product is the end. It's an old form of marketing. It's an old form of marketing where the brand becomes the hero, where your product becomes the hero of somebody else's conflict. You're solving somebody else's problem. Today, 
I think what a lot more people are going for is this thing they call empowerment marketing, where we're actually unleashing the potential within people themselves. So the person or the customer is the hero, and we are the person who helps them or the product who helps them achieve what they want to achieve. But either is okay. If it's a problem that needs to be solved, your brand is the hero. If it's a problem that allows somebody else to achieve their potential, they're the hero. But be clear on that. That forms the very basis of your communication with people, of your offering.